Imagine being the smartest version of yourself. What does that look like? Well, in this video, I'm going to draw upon my years of experience as an academically published researcher in the cognitive sciences, as well as an educator, to show you three ways you can increase and optimize your IQ beyond where it currently is, even if you already have a high IQ. Starting with the first way, cognitive stimulation and challenge. Now, before we explore this method of boosting your IQ, let's address the elephant in the room, namely what's called the heritability of IQ. Decades of research on IQ, or intelligence quotient, have revealed that much of our ability with respect to IQ is inherited, or in other words, encoded in our genes. While some studies suggest that around 30 to 50% of our IQ is genetic, many studies suggest that up to 80% of our IQ is determined by our genes. That, however, leaves us with as much as 20% of our IQ that isn't determined by our genes. And so, what can we do with that 20%? Well, multiple tier 1 studies have shown that activating what is called neuroplasticity, or in other words, the brain's ability to literally rewire itself, can significantly improve abilities associated with IQ, including working memory, attention, and executive function. So then, how do we improve these? What kinds of cognitive stimulation or challenge can we engage in to help increase our IQ? Well, while there is a lot of great research showing the cognitive benefits of activities such as reading and learning new things in general, there's also research on some highly specific brain training techniques, games, and puzzles that can help to increase the cognitive skills associated with IQ. One of these is called Brain Age, which is essentially a video game containing mathematical questions, Sudoku puzzles, and other sorts of gamified tests that help challenge, reinforce, and build those new neural networks in your brain that boost IQ. Other types of puzzle games seem to be effective as well, and in fact, computer gaming in general might actually increase what's called fluid intelligence, a crucial component of IQ, although this in particular is what is called observational research, and so more studies do need to be done to confirm this effect. Another emerging area of research that has so far demonstrated impressive results for actually raising IQ scores is what is called the Strategic Memory Advanced Reasoning Tactics Training Program, or simply SMART for short. In multiple randomized controlled trials, this training program has been shown to help young people in particular to actually raise their IQ scores, effectively activating that 20% of IQ that is within their control. But aside from actually going through this entire training program yourself, how can you at least partially replicate these results? Well, since the curriculum in this program centers around what is called executive function skills such as strategic thinking and abstract reasoning, your best bet for replicating these kinds of results is to regularly engage in cognitive tasks that are beyond your current skill level and which challenge you to find creative solutions. So for instance, find math a bit scary? Pick up a calculus or a physics textbook and start struggling through the problems. Practice deliberately and repeatedly until you can tackle harder and harder problems. Want to improve your strategic thinking? Try doing something like starting a business, taking a philosophy course, or engaging in some sort of activity that's going to require you to tackle new problems and situations you've never encountered. Want to find a new game to play? Play something like chess or crossword puzzles, both of which challenge you to engage in strategic thinking and become more mentally flexible. So what kind of activity are you going to get started with to boost your IQ? Well, don't wait around, because remember that 20% of IQ that is within your control? Research has shown that that number seems to decrease with age, so the younger you are, the more improvements you can make in your IQ. While it's never too late to improve your cognitive function, it's important to get started now. But cognitive stimulation and challenge isn't the only approach we should take to increase our IQ. In addition, we need to focus on another aspect that's not discussed enough, exercise and nutrition. You see, recently I was sitting around reading a book and I had this aha moment. I started to ask myself, is it just my imagination or am I actually getting smarter? 
You see, for the past year and a half, I've been extremely consistent with my exercise routine with respect to both lifting weights and doing cardio. And for some reason, it was during this moment that I realized not only was I reading faster and retaining information better, but in my private tutoring sessions, I've been able to spot the student's issue more quickly, break down the solution more thoughtfully and clearly, and also write more creatively and efficiently than I have in a while. And it's not just my experience. By this point, the evidence is overwhelming. A recent large-scale study drawing on data from more than 2,700 clinical trials has confirmed the profound brain-boosting benefits of exercise for people in all age groups. And many of these studies specifically demonstrate benefits for skills related to IQ. For instance, aerobic exercise, such as walking and running, seem to increase fluid intelligence, which is the ability to think abstractly, reason, and solve problems, while weightlifting seems to have benefits for executive function and memory. What's called high-intensity interval training, or HIIT for short, has shown incredible benefits for cognitive function and health as well. Nutrition is also key, but it doesn't seem that any particular diet such as keto, paleo, vegan, carnivore, etc. is the best for every person here. Based on multiple well-designed studies, the common link between diet and high IQ, when also controlling for confounding variables, seems to be the following. A diet high in fruit, vegetables, fish, and fiber, and low in processed grains and sugars. My personal routine? I typically eat a high-protein breakfast with eggs or fish, go to work out at the gym five days a week, focusing mainly on weightlifting with three days focused on upper body and two days focused on lower body, and I add in about 40 minutes of cardio three of those days with that HIIT I mentioned mixed in. My favorite form of HIIT is just sprinting for a minute followed by cooldowns, but there are so many ways to do HIIT, so you have to just find the way that works for you. If you're a subscriber to my channel, you probably can tell I write lots and lots of video scripts weekly, and so one of the main benefits I see from specifically my cardio days is a huge boost in my focus while I'm doing my script writing. So if you're having specific issues with staying focused while doing cognitive tasks, you cannot skip your workouts. And they don't need to be really intense. I just happen to like intense workouts. Going for a 30 minute walk every day, or bicycling, or swimming, or playing basketball, you know, the ones you enjoy most are the ones you're gonna stick with. But then again, not all factors that affect IQ are these more physical ones. Sometimes they're more along the lines of the third way on this list to improve your IQ, namely socialization and environment. There are a number of social and environmental factors that have been shown to be predictive of IQ, namely parental education and occupation, family income and economic status, and urban versus rural residents. Now, most of this research has been done on children, and it's important to note that there are most likely dozens of confounding variables here, meaning, for instance, that although income level partially predicts IQ, this does not mean that one causes the other. That being said, there are some findings from all this that researchers have been able to tease out of all of these associations. Among all of these factors seems to lie a commonality, stimulating social environments. Higher parental education and income levels, for instance, seem to contribute to their children's IQ by increasing the likelihood that those children will be exposed to high levels of social stimulation that is both educational and challenging. And researchers note potentially the same findings with respect to children raised in urban environments. But how does this research help you? Well, since research is currently limited with respect to these factors as they function in adults, it's hard to make firm conclusions here. But what we do know is that there are clear cognitive benefits to socializing with others. You see, a vital component of IQ is problem solving and abstract reasoning. The more we expose ourselves to conversations with others and even social situations which require either our leadership skill or teamwork ability, the more we increase these types of skills. So although the research isn't there yet, is it at least reasonable to conclude that making a concerted effort to socialize regularly like this is important to increasing our IQ? Yeah, I think it's reasonable. And it's one of the many reasons I, as an introvert, make a regular effort not just to stay inside my own comfortable bubble, which is 
way too easy, but instead to try as often as possible to meet up with friends, make new friends who inspire or challenge me, and engage in conversations with others who challenge me. Without these, it's very easy not to stay sharp. Now, are these the only ways to improve IQ? And as a matter of fact, is IQ even the only form of intelligence? Not by a long shot, which is why you should watch this next video.